When the leaves began to fall that first week in October, so many years ago, I could not have been less prepared for what would ultimately alter the course of my life and any foreseeable future link to it. Autumn was that time of year that I would spring to life, even as God and society had both declared that a natural state of death and the ensuing celebrations of it were far more statutory. Perhaps that's what its allure was, a seasonal reminder that there is a valid finality to all things, and that succumbing to it would be linked to my fate. Capitalism would take my hand and walk me down the aisle of Halloween matrimony, my bride-to-be a shopping cart full of archaic, gothic, and gory accoutrements, ready to be displayed proudly in my home and atop my desk at work. The faithful cart and I would exchange our vows at a cash register with a swipe of my debit card, and the ordained cashier would pronounce us husband and wife of horror, our marriage license a lengthy receipt, our honeymoon destination as an of yet undecorated household, awaiting us that very evening. We were to jet off to disrupt the present state of my abode for the next month, and there was no turning back. I should preemptively note that despite the exciting and positive energy surrounding me and my state of mind during this time of year, I would inevitably fall victim to bouts of sleep paralysis. If you have never experienced this phenomenon, I can only say that I hope you never do. While science has performed its ceremonious duty and explained the how of sleep paralysis, we don't fully understand the why. This is the first bit of fright that I will inject into my tale. You see, sleep paralysis has been documented for centuries. At one point, given the moniker Old Hag Syndrome, as the condition's onset is accompanied by what has been illustrated most notably by the 18th century artist Henry Fuseli, an old hag resting upon the chest of the unconscious. This illustration serves two purposes. First, to convey the feeling of weighted helplessness to the viewer. And second, to portray what is visible to the victim upon waking. Science tells us that sleep paralysis occurs when we wake during REM phases of sleep when the body is dutifully paralyzed by two chemical systems in the brain, ionotropic receptors and metabotropic GABA receptors, presumably to prevent us from acting out during our dream states. The awful truth about sleep paralysis is that, upon waking, neither the paralysis nor the dream state go away, though our state of consciousness returns. Thus, one remains paralyzed while awake. And yet, this is not the horror of the event in totality. The old hag isn't simply just felt, but seen. This can occur in several different ways. Shadows darting across the walls and ceiling, a figure lying next to you, or, or even sitting atop your motionless body. Perhaps even heard with scratching nails or chittering, whispering voices. It is dark by every definition. There, you see, terror in being unable to move, to tell the malevolent figure to get away, to scream for help when you can see a figure sitting in your dark corner of your bedroom. A shadow upon shadows. You believe you're going to die, and you can't even fight back. It is in this spirit that I push play and resume my tale. The drive home was pleasant that night, a series of twists and turns westward through the country hills of central Texas, where one wouldn't expect that beautiful turning leaves are visible hanging from near skeletal branches of oak trees the backdrop of this particular night illuminated by snaking tendrils of the Colorado River, and a wondrously naked pale moon ornamenting a cloudless night sky. While cruising the hills, I enjoyed keeping the windows rolled down so that 10 degree changes in temperature variation rushed against my skin as the hills dipped and swayed and rose higher and higher, taking me away from the city light pollution and towards rural solitude. I parked my car in the severely inclined driveway, securing its position with the emergency brake, and then grabbed my bags of Halloween decor and strolled up to my front door. My keys jangled against the stillness of the night, complementing the soft, crinkling sound of overstuffed plastic bags hanging from my fingers and forearms as I unlocked the front door to my residence, stepped across the threshold, and spotted the perfect resting place for my loot. My home sat within a semi-isolated area of about a two-acre plot, elevated slightly upon one of those aforementioned hills, and while there were neighbors scattered about in every direction, and homes similar to mine dotting the usually green landscape, I remained otherwise unbothered. The location made for a fantastic party spot, and my annual Halloween bash that year was sure to edge out the previous one. I turned back and glanced outside, 
A streetlight was visible about a half mile away, casting its orange glow upon nature's shroud. A various fauna could be heard traveling and conversing through the still night air. I closed my door, bolted both locks, and made my way into the kitchen for a very late dinner. The microwave on the clock showed 1.52 p.m., but that wasn't right. I had never set the time after all my electronics were victimized by a power surge at the hands of a furious Central Texas storm just a few nights prior. I pulled my phone from my right pocket. 10.13 p.m. Dinner, then bed. I needed to get some sleep. I don't actually recall falling asleep that night, but this is where my personal nightmare began. Rasps. Scratches. It was this series of sounds that woke me from slumber and forced me to ask myself in the moment, am I really awake? I intended to sit up, but immediately found that this was not possible. My arms would not move, and when I attempted to turn my head to glance down at them to investigate why, I found that was not possible too. I was flat on my back, staring at the ceiling, my fan gently spinning, circulating air as one would expect, and producing the soft, rhythmic hum of the motor turning and the blades slicing through space. Fingernails, whispers, and chittering. Panic began to set in, a sinking feeling as I attempted to roll over, but again, found that I could not. The fingernails lightly scratched my pillow just behind the right side of my head, but I couldn't budge. A voice, a whisper laced with venom, spoke in sentences, in the certain way that incantations are crafted, but in a language that could not be discerned. Out of the corner of my eye, a shadow emerged, a slow, malicious figure that darted quite suddenly across the ceiling and settled in the far corner of my bedroom. I could only watch and listen. It was here that my body snapped back into action. Perhaps it was a perceived applied force of the intended motion that caused my left arm to swing about as I sat up quickly, drenched in cold sweat, and heaving a breath from my lungs faster than I could take back in. I looked to the corner and saw nothing. Emptiness. And yet I was not alone. A sudden break in the light of my bedroom window caused me to cast my gaze in that direction, and I face stared back. My breath caught my lungs and I swung my legs over the opposite side of the bed. The face stared back, unyielding and unwavering in its silent visage with abyssal eyes. Just as suddenly, it was gone. I won't bore you with the details of the rest of the night. It was sleepless. Sleep paralysis was not unknown to me by this point in my life, but experiences had never been so profound. Upon abandoning its state of paralysis, my body has always been very quick to react, allowing my mind to fully cast aside any remnants of its haunting demonic nighttime jaunt through dream hell. For the first time, this episode seemed to blend seamlessly into an extended reality, overdosing my senses and making me question, was that face outside my window real? Were those eyes, those dark emotionless eyes, were they actually watching me in my state of anxiety, fear, and helplessness? There was no definitive answer to this question, but logic dictated that this episode had simply been worse than the previous ones. So, the answer absolutely had to be no. I did my best to convince myself of this into the next morning. A new day granted me fresh perspective. And let's be honest, I was eager to begin applying decor, mixing old favorites with my new acquisitions, and casting the false equivalencies of the previous night's events out of my mind. I began pulling dusty boxes out of my office and bedroom closets and arranging them by rooms. They were labeled with a black marker. Living room, kitchen, dining area, and bathroom. Yes, bathroom. Because scaring the literal shit out of someone during a Halloween party is one of the most incredible acts to perform, particularly when alcohol is involved. The process went on for hours. A box was opened, its contents spread before me for further categorization and distribution. The empty box was then folded accordingly and tucked back into the closet. Iron sconces were nailed in the living room wall above my red leather sectional were adorned with polyester spiderwebs with rubber spiders dangling airily by a single thread attached to a foot. A newly acquired six-foot coffin now stood inside the front entryway, ready to be occupied on the night of the Halloween party. I stretched the spiderwebs further to create a web tunnel between the sconces and the entryway, careful to make sure that the webs were attached in places low enough to avoid any potential fire hazard from lit candles that would be positioned on the sconces, as well as along the kitchen bar and nearby shelving units. As the day progressed and the sun began to make a hasty retreat across the pastel sky, I began thinking about my new Philips Hue lighting system. 
The studio lights could be directed, and so this was done with the intent to ensure that any colored lighting schemes were most effective in highlighting each decoration in the best way possible. Vibrant reds and blues and purples were absorbed by the spider webs and cascaded down the walls that were filled with the framed canvas artwork of horror flick posters. Each hue blended perfectly into the next from room to hallway to room and brought to life my new patio door curtains that displayed a stunning nebula sporting the same color palette. The first day of Halloween decorating was coming to a close, and I had very nearly forgotten about the previous night's black magic. Little did I know, that was just the beginning. New horrors awaited. Texas was known for many things. Its ego in all things, bigger in its live music and entertainment capitals, its military bases, and its professional sports teams, and for menial attractions like the Marfa Lights. Over a hundred years, the Marfa Lights have been documented by locals and tourists alike, but a logical explanation or deduction of their existence was never validated. A UFO presence seemed like the most fun and entertaining validation, which is precisely what put Marfa on the tourist map and brought in folks from all over the world to try to bear witness to that wondrous phenomenon. That I should have a personal, tangible encounter never seemed to be of any consideration. Until night two. Oh, that second night, when reality took a turn down a path that I had never been. A little after 11 p.m., I crept into my bedroom, ready to pass out from a combination of the previous night's events and the day's decorating mixed in with the typical household chores like laundry and dishes. It had been a fantastic Saturday, all things considered, and Sunday looked like a great way to wrap up the first October weekend. I had never been one for making my bed, so sheets and blankets were unkempt, just as I liked them, and I crawled into bed with only comfort and not neatness in mind. I asked Alexa to set an alarm for 8 a.m. the following morning and requested that she play thunderstorm sounds on volume 2 setting to help shut off my mind with ambient natural noise. Light. Blinding light. Burning my eyes, I couldn't escape the light, it was everywhere. I woke to the above, and while I found that I could not move freely this time, the brightness of the light washing over my bedroom prevented me from identifying its source. The hairs on the back of my neck and on my arms began to tingle, as I felt each rise up and brush up against one another as it exposed a heavy amount of static electricity. A gentle hum resounded through the whitewashed room, adding to its unnatural sensory audit and constructing another layer of confusion in my mind. My torso felt tight, and as I sat up and jumped to my feet, I discovered that my legs were light and airy, no longer constrained by gravitational conventions. The window. I rushed towards a blazing portal to the outside world and tried to glance upward through squinted eyes and cupped hands to no avail. Despite my efforts, no source of this debilitating radiance could be identified. My anxiety and my rate of breathing both increased in a correlating fashion, almost combating the physical weightlessness I felt by dropping an emotional giant atop my shoulders. With only slight hesitation, I emerged from my trance and doubled back to my bed, shaking from the insanity that I had found myself a part of, terror in my bones and madness crawling across my skin. I felt like a child as I curled up under my sheets and blanket, burying my head in an attempt to shield myself from the intensity beyond. The humming stopped. I felt heavier. My hair follicles no longer tingled, and my hair settled back into place. Rasps. Scratches. No. No, this couldn't be. From one horror to the next, my mind was nearly at a breaking point. Back-to-back -back nights, I had suffered at the hands of unexplainable circumstances. One set shrouded in darkness, the other masked behind blinding radiance. Yet the fingernails began clawing, and the chittering voices and that indiscernible tongue began chanting. And I, my grip on reality, began to peel away, as if being dismantled by those terrible fingernails themselves. This time there was no accompanying paralysis, there was no wakeful dreams, there was no previous state of consciousness to fall back on as the causation of dreamscape projections into reality. Hours passed, the sounds never ceasing. I could not bring myself to stay under those blankets for the duration of the night, waiting for the sounds to end and the shadows to succumb to the first rays of a new day's light. I was rigid on my bed, frozen in that horizontal position with my head propped up in my pillow. 
chasing that awful shadow around my room until it settled in the very same corner and waited. The darkness of night began to fade. From pitch black to dark gray, light gray to early morning blue, the Sunday morning sky outside washed away the lingering nightmare seemingly imprisoned in my bedroom. But my own personal prison remained. To prevent my mind from shattering, I felt like I had to get up and proceed with the day's agenda. The idea of breakfast was just an idea. I could not bring myself to eat, as I truly felt as though consuming anything at all, as consumed as I was, would result in vomiting it all right back up. A cold glass of water was the best I could muster, and from there, a morning pour of Glenfitch 18-year-old scotch. Neat with two milliliters of water added by precision from an eyedropper to release the oak notes. I entered into this arrangement hoping that hydration and a bit of alcohol might calm my mind and relax my nerves. But my manic act of decorating my home for that damn Halloween party decidedly dissuaded any relief from other means. I positioned candy bowls atop the kitchen bar and began toying with my sound system. Wireless speakers were the new addition this year. So finding that perfect placement to maximize the sound performance was top priority. After scouting out locations and rearranging a few smaller pieces of furniture ever so slightly, the speakers were positioned, and the first sound test produced haunting organ music that thickened the atmosphere with solemn excitement. Bass and treble were nearly enough to vibrate the previous night's events out of my thoughts. But not quite. Not quite. The day progressed, and... Still, I could not find a desire to introduce calories into my body. Sustenance was not priority, as my Halloween party was all that I could think about that even remotely offered relief from the madness of the last two nights. Night three quickly approached. Time passed in a flurry and slowed to a standstill, minute by minute, hour by hour, until darkness swept across the hill country, trailing a swath of amber light still granting a stage to those beautifully haggard autumn oaks. I sat in the living room, planted firmly in my trusty, comfortable armchair, admiring my day's work and glancing occasionally at the television. The sound was low, demanding that attention be given if any sense of the programming was to be made. It took me several moments to realize that a laugh track was playing, iconic of sitcoms in the 90s, appropriate. I had not laughed in 48 hours, and the sound of laughter emanating from the television as soft as it was reached my ears and softened my mind a touch. Friends. Mine would be here in just a few weeks. A sudden burst of movement snapped my attention away from the television into the hardwood floor as a scuttling sound followed. It's like a clickety clack. Little legs making impact on a solid surface as a cockroach made its presence known. I had grown accustomed to not liking the things, opting instead just to cast them outside with a hefty toss for other inhabitants of the natural world to do as they would. The roach was no exception. I stood collected an empty mason jar, and scooped the doomed pest inside. As I approached my front door, I could hear those little legs scratching up against the glass. I nearly dropped the jar. Scratching. I opened the front door and heaved the little demon into a pile of collected leaves in the front of my yard. A meal for another scavenger, perhaps. I turned back into the entryway and closed the front door, perhaps with a bit more of a slam than I normally would have. Hastily, I locked both bolts, turned on the front porch light, made my way back to the living room. I had left my phone resting on the right arm of my chair and picked it up and checked the time. 11.06 p.m. Time for bed. Bed. The scuttling noise distracted me once more. With its accompanying clickety-clack, little legs made their way across the hardwood floor once more. I turned, glancing in the direction of the regrettable sound, but did not see another roach. Instead... Nothing. No sound except for the soft laugh track. In my haste, I had failed to turn off the television. I returned to the dark red armchair, picked up the television remote, and ended that soft laughter for the night. Forever, they would turn out. Holding onto those cheery sounds, I made my way past the hanging pictures in the hallway, leading to my bedroom. The door of the room was cracked, and there was a sliver of light at the edge of its way inside, stretching across the floor and jutting up at a 90 degree angle along the wall. The door creaked slightly as I opened it, almost as if issuing a warning, screaming at the top of its rusty lungs to turn away for fear of becoming as unhinged as I was. Ignoring this warning, 
I made my way into the master bedroom, brushed my teeth, rinsed and gargled with mouthwash, and appreciated the burn of minty fresh alcohol as I undressed and climbed into bed. Nothing had ever felt as provocative as sleep felt in that moment, that my body hit memory foam. There was impact, and then there was silence. There was no greater relief. Sleep beckoned with the promise of peace and quiet, and hopefully an adventure or two in a faraway place. My eyes closed. They opened, looked to the window, and there, those abyssal eyes embedded in that menacing face watching me and watching the shadows of my bedroom. Rasps, scratches, my eyes closed. I awoke once more and it is here where my tale approaches its end. See, I was no longer in my bedroom and my mattress was no longer underneath me, cradling me in comfort. I was strapped to a cold table in a cold and black room, darkened nearly to the point of pitch, paralyzed and unable to speak. Fingernails, whispers, and chittering. A set of abyssal eyes stared at me from the observation windows while a shadowy figure darted around the room. Something scuttled with a clickety-clack across my solid floor. While I could not move, I felt weightless, suspended, and realized that the table I rested on was not grounded, but elevated to the spatial center of the room. In the middle of the night, I had been transported to where? I didn't know. Perhaps I never would. How long I had been in this place, I did not know. But as I regained consciousness, I slowly recalled waking up over and over and over again. Dozens of times, hundreds of times, maybe even thousands of times. Each time, the shadows and rasps, those scratches from those fingernails, and the chittering and scuttling and Clickety-clack permeated my field of vision and my hearing so that no other memories of those wakeful experiences could be retained. The shadowy figure with its rasps and its chittering settled in the darkest upper corner of the observation room while the clickety-clack halted. The chittering continued, growing louder this time, louder and louder until it broke into a wailing shriek. I closed my eyes. I don't know where I am, when I am, or if this madness will ever end. What I do know is I have encountered extraterrestrial life. I have encountered demons. They have encountered each other, but I have not encountered God. I am not alone, but it is not he who is with me. Perhaps Nishi was right. God is dead, but we we are not alone. I hope I get to have my Halloween party. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, I read some, uh, basically, ideas about doing, like, a breakdown of the story after the fact. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Um, I like to read stories, but picking them apart, not really too much my thing. But I appreciate you guys watching nonetheless. I will... uh, (laughs) People people didn't like the scream in the last video. I don't know. I thought it kind of added something, but maybe it didn't. Who knows? Anyways, like I said, thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. Like if you like too. Subbing is a good way to stay up to date on when I post if you found this channel by random. And I will see y'all in the next one.